Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. This morning as we worship, the word of the Lord came to me. And the word that came to me is that no matter your needs, whatever you have been waiting on God for, God tells me to tell you that he is there for you. The Lord is there with you and he will take you through it. No matter your need, no matter what is worrying you, his presence will melt the mountains before you. His presence will melt the mountains before you. The scripture says, at his presence, the mountains melt like wax. Whatever the mountain is, his presence will melt it like wax. So relax in your spirit and know that he is God. Thank you, Jesus. I won't one enemy We give you glory, Father, this morning. We are gathered before you, the great King, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the God who was and is and is to come. The scriptures say that by you all things consist. Without you, there is nothing that will exist. We owe all thanks, all honor, all glory unto you, the living God. We thank you this morning. This morning, I depend on you, Holy Spirit. Grant me your trance. Let your word find good soil in the hearts of men and women. That it yield for fruit. I pray that your word will not return to you void. That it will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. That you are able to do far more exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think or imagine to you be all glory to you be all praise to you be all honor thank you holy spirit we subdue every activity of the enemy in the name of jesus i capture the mind of everyone here by the blood of jesus cover every mind with the blood and pray that the power in the blood will neutralize every power of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I honor you, Jesus, this morning. Thank you for your way, your living way. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to speak to you still under our team for the men dealing with sin I want to speak to you on overcoming sin overcoming sin it is possible for you to overcome sin it is possible to, for you to rule over sin because the scripture says that sin will have no dominion or rulership over you it is possible so when we talk about sin the hope that we have is that there is the power of God available for us to overcome sin and we can rule over sin the greatest problem of man is sin the greatest problem of man is sin sin is the greatest problem that's why the scripture says that God made him to become sin. He who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God 
in him. God made him to become sin so that we, through that working of God, will attain the righteousness of God in him. Sin is the biggest problem of mankind. But we thank God that Jesus came and dealt with the issue of sin. And so we have victory over sin. Say amen. amen. But I will talk on how to overcome it. How to overcome this biggest problem of mankind. How to overcome sin in our lives. And it is possible to overcome sin. Say amen. amen. Say it like you mean it. It is possible to overcome sin. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So what is sin? Sin is an act of transgression against divine laws. An act of transgression against divine laws. Breaking divine laws. In other words, sin is anything that you do that distorts the relationship between you and God. Anything that you do or do not do that distorts the relationship with God. Because there are certain things you don't do, but it's a sin. The Bible says that he who knows what is right and refuses to do it, to him it is sin. So anything that distorts your relationship with God is sin. It may be an opting act. Or it may be internal, but it has the effect of distorting your relationship with God. You can hate something and not as hate somebody and not express it, but your heart is filled with hate, and nobody sees it, but it distorts your relationship with God, and it is sin. So anything that distorts your relationship is sin. The, the, the dictionary defines it and says that it is any, anything or any thought or action that endangers the ideal relationship between an individual and God. Any thought. So your thoughts can also be sin. So sin it's a mystery, you know, it's a mystery. Your thoughts can be sin. Your actions can be sin. But the, 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 the important thing I'm stressing here is that it distorts or it endangers your relationship with your God. And that thing is sin. If we consider how it started, sin did not start on this earth. Sin amazingly started in heaven. They did not start on earth. Amazingly, it started in heaven. In Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Move, son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyros, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom. Now, the, the, the devil, Satan, is described here as the king of Tyros. So, there's a spiritual thing, so parity that was over Tyros. And, and though there was a physical king, there was a spiritual principality controlling affairs. And that was Lucifer at work. Say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou sealest up the sun. When you come into a situation, it becomes complete. Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Complete beauty. Perfect. It's not like the Miss Ghana kind of beauty. The 
next Ghana kind of duty. May be beautiful, shape wise, face wise, but there may be some spot somewhere. Say amen. amen. You are perfect in duty, complete. Scripture is saying Lucifer was perfect in duty. Move on. Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. He walked in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onks, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets. And of thy types was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Move. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered it. And, and I have said thee so. You were the anointed cherub that covered it. It was the archangel that covered the throne of God. Anointed. Anointed. Anointed cherub that cover it. And I, God, have made you so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. What, where have you walked before? You, where have you walked before? Thou hast walked upon the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in all thy ways, in thy ways, from the day that thou was created. So Lucifer was created. Till iniquity was found in thee. You were standing in the before the throne of God. You were the archangel, the cherub that covered the throne of God, anointed. Anointed, perfect in all your ways or in your ways. Until iniquity was found in thee. That's why the scripture says that it's amazing how iniquity could permeate heaven and not go into the lower angels, but could enter the very presence of God. Iniquity and enter. Into the chair of the covered the throne. So the Bible says that the mystery is a mystery, you can't understand it. The mystery of iniquity that working is a mystery. It's something you can't understand, you can't comprehend, you can't believe that sin could permeate enter heaven and go into the heart of Satan. The heart of Lucifer, the anointed cherub. So no matter how you are anointed, sin, you don't play with it. Say amen. Second Thessalonians 2:7. The mystery of iniquity that worketh. It's a mystery. For the mystery of iniquity that already work, only he who now let it will let. The mystery of iniquity. The mystery of iniquity that worked. Sin is a mystery. That's why you don't have to joke with it. You don't have to joke with it. Till iniquity was found in thee. So it started from heaven. Right before the throne of God. Iniquity, sin, could enter. The spirit called sin could enter. Into the heart of Lucifer. And uh, I tried to read the, 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 the nature of Lucifer, the, 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 the status of Lucifer. He walked in the midst of the stones of fire. This was an anointed children, it was an archangel, not an ordinary angel. An archangel. An archangel. 
When you go through scriptures, you see only three are mentioned. I don't know if there are more, but there are three mentioned. Lucifer, Michael, and then Gabriel. It's all mentioned. And at another place, it says that all the instruments you read continue. All the instruments of praise were deposited in Satan, in Lucifer. The man was loaded and anointed, but sin permitted. So you don't joke with sin. No matter the, your status, you can be the Pope or be the Archbishop. You don't play with sin. Say amen. amen. I just tell you maybe one, one of the things that sin does. You know, sin has the ability to separate us from God. Sin can mount a garrison or a war, a dividing war between you and God. It has that potential, has that ability, it has that unction to do that. To separate you from your God. In Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1. Quickly, run with me quickly. Isaiah 50, 50, 59 verse 1. Verse 1. Behold the Lord's hand, Jehovah, Lord, L-O-R-D, caps, Jehovah. Behold, Jehovah's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So iniquity, sins, has the ability to separate you from God. And it's a critical thing. When you are separated from God, you are separated from life. You are separated from hope. You are separated from the promises of God. So sin is a terrible thing. When it separates you from God, it is cutting you away from life. Because the source of life is God. And sin has the potential, the ability. You may be playing with it, but the effect of it is that it cuts you off from God. You call and God doesn't hear. You pray and God doesn't hear. Because your sin can mount a wall that blocks your prayer, blocks everything that you try to present before God. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard, it's not that the Lord will not answer my prayer. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. It means you will pray and it will not go through. God will hear it. Your cries higher, higher. It becomes noise. It doesn't get through. It can't go between, beyond the veil. Say amen. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Say amen. amen. I don't have time like we will, we will look at all the consequences of sin. But David tries to summarize it. He tries to summarize it in Psalm 51. When he committed blunder against God. He talks about, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Renew a right spirit within me. It means that sin can cause, has the ability to let the Holy Ghost leave you. And a wrong spirit comes to inhabit you. But if you have time, take time, study that scripture, Psalm 51. And it talks about the effect of sin. In David's prayer to God, he mentions the things that sin can commit, can, can bring about in your life. And he talks to God about it. And he pleads with God over those things. But I want to cut this off so I can finish this what I need to share with you, how to overcome it. That is where my, my direction is. How to overcome it. How to overcome it. Hebrews 12, verse 1. 
Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin. If you are born again, if you are complete, if you are sincerely born again, it's not every sin that is a problem to you. If you are born again, there are certain things that you are so strengthened to overcome them. So for some of you, you are born again, you, 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 you the appetite and the temptation to steal cannot hit you. For some of you, you, nothing will move you to steal. It doesn't attract. Stealing is not a problem for you. Is that right? Some of you, stealing is not a problem. You can put the person beside ten thousand dollars. You will not take a Tesla because you have strength in that area. But some, for somebody, that is his biggest problem. When you put something beside the person, then something tells the person, take it, take it. It starts telling the person the things you can do with that money. So it becomes a problem to that person. So the thing we are talking about, we are not all on the same level. Are you hearing me? <laughs> somebody... Drinking is not a problem to you at all. Let the, you can advertise and bring a barrel and let it overflow with bubbles. It won't move you one bit. Nothing will happen to you. But some, for somebody, when he tunes into the telly and he sees a brown bottle bubbling, bubbling, and then he remembers that a friend told him it is mujadro, 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 and you want to take it. <laughs> <laughs> becomes a problem to that person <laughs> for somebody smoking is not a problem somebody smoking smoking so to take cigarette and smoke it, it doesn't even attract you it does, if you were the only one on earth all the tobacco companies will collapse <laughs> because it doesn't attract you in the least but for somebody this is problem. This is problem. <laughs> that the Bible says, let us lay away the weight and that sin. Specific, the sin that so easily, easily, you find difficult resisting it lay aside and today i'm going to by the grace of god try and go through scripture so we will learn how to lay aside those things how to when the bible says you lay aside it means you have the capacity you have the ability you have the help from heaven to lay it aside god will not ask you to create a farm and not give you energy and strength to do it are you hearing me so when God tells you that lay it aside, it means you have the capacity. He has put in you something that will endeavor you to, over, to lay it aside, to cut it away. Or the strength of heaven has the capacity to lift you to a level where you can lay it aside. So the Bible says lay aside the sin that so easily beset us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher 
the pioneer and perfecter. You are not supposed to look unto Jesus as the altar, the pioneer, the one that ushered you into salvation only. So you don't remain at the level of salvation. Are you hearing me? Because he's the altar. Look unto him as the altar, yes. But not only as the altar, but also the perfecter of your faith. The one who is able to perfect your faith. The one who is able to help you. The finisher of your faith. It is a terrible thing to run and not to finish a race. It would be better not to run at all. But you run on the last moment you are unable to finish. You get a muzzle full. Jesus is there to strengthen you so that you won't get a muzzle full. You will run the race and finish it. Say amen. So we want to look at how we can overcome this sin. How we can overcome this sin. For you to overcome sin, certain things that weigh you down, the sin. And when I'm talking about that, certain things, again, let me emphasize it, that certain things are no, not a problem to you at all. Not a problem to you. Not a problem to you. <laughs> For you some, some of the things are not a problem to you. Not a problem at all. Not a problem. Not a problem. But sometimes it's a problem. Other things are problems to you. But there are certain things that are not a problem to you. I can mention so many things. So many things. But the first step to overcome sin is to have a determination within yourself, a desire within yourself to overcome that thing that is weighing you down. If you don't have that desire, that willingness, that desire, that longing, that distance, I must get over it. If you don't have that longing, forget it. There must be that desire. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. There must be that desire. This thing is distorting my relationship with God. I must get over it. I must determine to get over I must be willing to deal with it, to let it go. That's the first step, to determine. You must get that determination within yourself. You must get that willingness and the desire to overcome that thing. If you don't have it, all that I'll talk about, you will listen to it, but the urge to overcome it is important. You must have that edge. And you must seek God's face that God will drop in you, put in you some, 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 I don't know the, the words, something that makes you feel uncomfortable to get over it. God must put that in you. Something must boil within your system that no, this thing I must ride over it. That desire must come. That's the first step. If you don't have it, then you haven't started the journey. Seek the face of God for God to do something because there's a sin that you love, you love, you love, you find this God to cut off. You find this God to cut off. There must be some holy anger within your spirit to deal with that thing. That's the first step. The second step is to identify the areas of your weakness. You know yourself more than I do. The areas of your weakness. You know it. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows your areas of your weakness. You know it. The areas that you, the sin that so easily beset you. They may be sins. That so easily beset you. You know it. I don't need to tell you. You know it. As I'm speaking to you, the Holy Ghost is reminding you of that sin. 
you are hearing the voice of the spirit telling you is this area this area identify the area don't box as if you are boxing the air have the target are you hearing me have the target there are certain areas this is not a problem so i don't want it to be a general a general no 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 it's not a general this thing this thing dealing with it you need specialities it's not a general practice system. you need a specialist you need god to go direct to the problem because there are certain things that don't bother you there are some of you when you see a lady dressed in a tight dress it doesn't move you around it but somebody sees it and then the, the mind is moving some things and then you you, you, you close your eyes and then you are, the devil pushes your ear your, 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 your head back look at it the devil tells you look at it I'm presenting something to you then you take no 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 look at it you, you do and then <laughs> <laughs> so know the area the areas that you have the problem know that area concentrate on that area that's where god is going to help you say amen, amen. don't don't behave as if it's a general they are talking general no 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 they are not talking general you have this problems such are problems you have some of you ladies when you see a macho man then something is doing you 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 today is mother's day so i'll stir the ladies more <laughs> something is doing you but you see let me tell you something <laughs> If you talk about pretense, ladies pretend more than men. Mercy. Oh, I'm telling you, a pattern also know you some stars. Do I have some witness? that is wrong you let's look at second corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 second corinthians chapter 13 examine yourselves whether you be in the faith prove your own selves know you know your own selves how that jesus is in you except you be ruled exam there's a constant need for you to be examined yourself. this is the area that worries me get to know it Say amen. amen. Look at Proverbs 16, verse 6. Proverbs 16, verse 6. Quickly, quickly. By mercy and what? Truth. Iniquity is purged. When you are not truthful to yourself, your iniquity cannot be taken away. Be honest with yourself. Know yourself. Know the areas. By iniquity, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Say amen. amen. First point, there must be a desire. Second point, identify the area that you are weakest most. Identify the area. And begin to deal with it. See, and when you are dealing with sin, you've got to be ruthless. I said you've got to be ruthless. When God made Jesus to the Son, hung him on the cross, made him to the Son, and the Bible says God dealt with him. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that he was bruised, he was stricken, 
the, the soldiers shipped him, spat on him, did all sort of terrible. When you watch the passion, the things they did to Jesus, it was God at work through the soldiers, dealing with sin, ruthless. He did not consider him to be a son at that stage. It was sin that God was dealing with. Are you hearing me? God was dealing with it. That's what the scriptures say. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 53. From the extent, quickly. Isaiah 53, the extent. It says that, yet, it talks about his suffering. Then it says, yet, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. So it pleased who? The Lord. Jehovah, L O R D, the Father. It pleased the Father to bruise him, to bruise his son. Because he had become sin. And God was dealing with sin. God was ruthless. You watch the passion and say, Ay, ay. That was God at work. Behind the scenes, dealing with sin. And he teaches us how to deal with sin. You've got to be ruthless. You don't play with sin. You don't play. You don't, you don't play. You don't play with sin. You don't play. I used to. There was some ACT. You know, ACT, African Christian Press. Or some magazine they used to come out with and there was a cartoon in it we talked about sin and there was a snake who would go to uh, a hen's distance there was a small gap to the hen's distance there was a gap and then it would go there and then take the egg and swallow it when it's coming back you know because the, the, the hole is very small squeezes his body and then the, the egg will crash inside the tummy so it will go out and he kept feeding on it was a cartoon i used to read it to kept, kept feeding on the eggs until one day the the the, the, the owner of the place realized that ah, there's something wrong so he decided that this time he would boil the egg he took two of the eggs boiled them and put it there the same that day that snake came in come late in the evening and when it came, went through the hole, got the egg, said, oh, God, nice. <laughs> then he took it, he took the, he swallowed the egg, and now it was coming out. At the usual, when it goes through the hole, because it's a small hole, it crashes the, the egg within it. This time, when it was going, the egg wasn't crashing. So it could not go. It was there until the owner came and saw it and killed it. And he said that sin, when you keep the, Playing with sin, playing with sin, playing with sin. One day, one day, it will land you in something that you don't desire. The end of it can take you to hell. When I read the scriptures and I see in the book of Revelations, it says, For without the city are the, 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 the idolaters. The idolaters, all liars, they are outside the city, without the city, not in, the, in heaven, not in the new Jerusalem. It means sin can take you out of the new Jerusalem. And that's the terrible thing, to serve God all these years. And not here, well done, good and faithful servant. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's something I pray that it will pass away. The Nigerian will say, must pass your eyes. That's why you've got to be serious about this issue of sin. God bruised his own son. He died ruthlessly. When you are dealing with sin, you deal with it ruthlessly. Ruthlessly. You identify the things that are disturbing you. It may be a relationship. Cut it off. You deal with it ruthlessly. That's the only way out. It may be some books you are reading. Take the books, burn it. You don't hide it there and hide it. I won't read it. You go and read it one day. It may be some, some, some programs you are watching. Cut it off. Are you hearing me? Deal with it ruthlessly. Say amen. amen. Deal with it ruthlessly. And you got to. When you identify where your weakness is, you've got to pray. I've talked about it. Pray sincerely before God. Commit it to God in prayer. 
call upon God in prayer. Be sincere about it. And pray. Pray about it daily. Daily. God, I rule over this situation. I rule over this thing that keeps me down. Today, I pray, grant me grace to rule over it. I don't want to go under it. Let it be your daily prayer. You sure, God, you need strength from on high to overcome it. Because that thing is powerful. If you could deal with Satan, the anointed. Lucifer, the anointed. And he has a way of dealing with you. If you joke with it, take it to God in prayer. Say amen. amen. Take it to God in prayer. Take it to God in prayer. Hebrews 4 16. The Bible says that. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne room of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help, to help what? our weaknesses in our times of need. Go before the throne. Go to the throne. Go boldly before the throne. Let it be a prayer, 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 prayer. Every day in your quiet time, talk about it to God. God, I need strength. God, I need grace to overcome this sin. I need grace. Grant me grace. Grant me strength. Lead me not unto temptation. Deliver my feet from evil. Deliver my feet from this path. Let that be your prayer every day. It's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. You need grace every day. The grace you had for yesterday cannot carry you today. Hear me. The grace that you tapped into yesterday cannot carry you today. You need fresh grace for every day. Fresh day. Fresh day. He renews his mercy to us as day by day. You need fresh grace. 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 Go to God in prayer. Pray about it. 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 Every day. Lift it to God in prayer. God will help you. I said God will help you. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. Put down James 5.13. I want to save time. James 5.13. Read it on your own. 1 John 5.18. James 5.13. 1 John 5.18. And then Isaiah 25 verse 4. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down and read it on your own. So pray about it. Pray about it daily. One of the ways to overcome it is to use the word. The word of God. Say amen. Spend time with God's word. Make time for the word. Make time for the word. In Psalm 119 verse 133. It says that. Quickly, quickly. Order my steps in thy word and let not iniquity have dominion over me. Order my steps in thy word and let not iniquity have dominion over me. It means when you walk outside the word, the spirit called sin will have dominion over you, to rule over you. Dominion means ruling over you. Order my steps in your word. Get into the word. The entrance of your word gives light. Sometimes we read the scriptures, we don't enter. God wants you to enter the word. Say, enter the word. There's a difference between just reading the Bible, entering the word. Entering the word. When you get yourself, when you enter the word, you are surrounded by the word. You are soaked in the word. And it takes time. It takes making time for the word of God to get to that situation. To enter into that word. Sometimes we look at the word from a distance. But God doesn't want you to look at it. Enter it. Get into the word. Spend time with the word. Meditate on the word. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. It means memorize it. Memorize it. Chew it, Baba. Let it go into you. Push it into your spirit. That's the way to deal with sin. 
the word. He says, how can a young man keep his way pure? He says that by, by, by hearkening or working according to the word or listening to the word or getting the word inside him. Without the word. You know, when the devil came against Jesus, Jesus used what? The word. The word has power. Say power. It has power. The word has power. I said the word has power. It has power. If you are weak in the word, the devil will play you like tennis ball. If you are weak in the word. That's the way, that what the devil desires, that you will run away from the word. You will not desire the word. That's why the devil will take your feet away from the midweek services where the word of God is preached. Because it doesn't want you to get the word inside you. Inside you. You have the ability, when you tune into radio stations, you like the stations where they discuss politics. The insults fly. Condemnations fly. That's where you got wrong in life. But when you tune to where you say, open to this scripture, you close it quickly. Because you don't want the word. You don't want the word. But the word is what sustains everything. It says he, he, he upholds all things by the word of his power. Upholds all things, including you. All things includes you. He upholds you by the word of his power. When you get the word inside you, you have power to resist the enemy. I said, you have the devil can't stand the word of God. Because This song, you, you sing it, you sing it, you sing it. But you don't know that the word has power. He upholds all things by the word of his power, including you. God will uphold you with the word of his power. Get into the word. Soak the word. That's one sure way of overcoming the tricks of the devil, the schemes of the devil, the wiles of the devil, the deception of the devil. The devil won't come to you straight. He will deceive you. He will try deception. You see, when sin is like when a hunter goes into the farm, into the bush, and wants to trap an animal, they will not put the trap open. You yourself, when you want to trap a, 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 ma- a mouse in your house, you take the, the, the trap, you put some sardine on it, you put some fish on it, you put something attractive on it, and then the rat, when he, the mouse, when he sees it, it will become, it will be following the scent. Follow, some of us will follow the scent of the devil too much. You follow it, you follow it, you follow it, and then it, it sees the sardine wants to take it and then the trap gets it. Pow! That's what the devil does. He will make things look attractive to you. He will make drinking look attractive to you. Following women looks attractive. Oh, can't you see? She's beautiful. He's this. He's this. He's this. Listen, when the devil starts to pump those things into you, begin to see, see beyond one year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Will it still be like that? Will it still be like that? It will not! It will change! It means it will not It's a deception. Say amen. amen! And when the person dies and goes to the ground, it rots away. Why do you chase things that don't last? Because the devil will deceive you. He won't come straight. The devil knows that when he comes to tell you that Jesus is not Christ, you will, you will challenge it. So he won't tell you that. He will not tell you that. He will not tell you that. The children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, God gave them certain instructions said don't marry outside don't do this don't do that 
And so long as they did that, there was a hedge ran about them. So when Balaam, these two sometimes confuses me, Balaam and Balak, who was the prophet? Balaam was the prophet. When Balaam, the prophet of God, Balak came to see him and said, Curse these people so that we can get access into them. But they recognize that God is their defense. And then Balaam said, he opened his mouth. The moment he opened his mouth to try and curse the children of Israel, blessings came. As he tried to curse, there was a blessing. He just cursed out, going to insult the people. Let this curse be blessed. They will be strong. And then Balak will look at Balaam. And did I call you here to come and bless them or curse them? Then Balak, Balaam told Balak, the only way to get to them is to get them to do the things God has asked them not to do. To break the defense. And that's why the error of Balaam is, is, is remembered in the book of Revelations. The error of Balaam. To tell the enemy what can break the defenses of the people of God. So what the devil will do, he won't come to you and tell you that Jesus is not law. Or Jesus is this or one of the four. No, 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 no. He won't tell you that because you are far above that. But he will come subtly. He will come with a deceptive attitude and deceive you until you see something which is dangerous as a And that's where he will get you. So you got to wake up. You got to pray. You got to use the word. You can put down Psalm 119 verse 9. Put down Psalm 119 verse 11. Put down Psalm 119 verse 2. Look, if you have time, read the entire Psalm 119. Meditate on the same, the Psalm 119. Every verse talks about the word of God. It's the longest psalm. But every verse talks about God's word. It will give you insight into that. Soak the word. Get used to the word. A day without the word is a dangerous adventure in life. A day without the word of God is a dangerous adventure in life. Let's get the word into your spirit. Say amen. I got to end. In dealing with sin, one of the things you've got to be careful of, you must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That means that build an association, be acquainted with the Spirit of God. Be sensitive with the Spirit of God. Let the Spirit of God guide you, help you, lead you. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are. The children of God. God expects that as a child of God, you must be led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. In everything, not in some things. In what you have to eat, where you have to go, who you have to associate with, the books you have to read, you must be led by the Spirit. You must be led. And the Holy Ghost is there to lead you. Say amen. Be led by the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 16. Quickly. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. You will not fulfill. There is a lust within your members. There is a desire which is not correct within your members. There is a desire. Sometimes, listen, when we talk about the lust, of the flesh we can talk about the negative ones direct negative ones the last to do some things which are not right but sometimes when you are not led by the spirit there will be a day that the Holy Ghost is telling you put your tummy down fast and seek the face of God but your flesh lasted to eat 
And if you are not sensitive to the spirit, you will eat. And you will distort what God wants to do in your life. God who knows the end from the beginning, knows the battles in the day, knows the battles in the week, knows the battles in the month. And the spirit of God who is given unto us to help us will instruct you, wait upon the law. Put your tummy down. Seek the face of God. Because there is a battle ahead. But because we are not sensitive to the spirit. Because the spirit is speaking. I said the spirit is speaking. Anybody. And this one. I have. I'm not thinking, picking it out from scripture. But I believe it and I know. That if you are a believer. To get into a vehicle. And die by an accident. It means you did not hack into the spirit of God. Because the spirit will prompt you somewhere along the line. He will wish to prompt you. He will desire. But sometimes our ears are so close that we can't hear the voice of the spirit. And it grieves God. God is a loving father. He will not look upon you for you to go into a crash and die prematurely. God is a loving father. He will speak. He will prompt you by his spirit. He will find a way. Sometimes the prompting does not get through because we are dead to the promptings of the Holy Ghost. Get close to the spirit. Associate yourself with the spirit. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You must be led. You must be led. You must be led. You must be led because you are in enemy territory. The prince of the power of the air is at work. And you need the help of the Holy Ghost. This then I say unto you, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. All sin are the works of the flesh. As it is written in the book of Galatians chapter 5. You can pummel this flesh. You can pummel it. You must hack into the Holy Ghost. You must hear the voice of the Spirit. That's the way to deal with some sins, some trap things that the enemy has laid in the path for you. The enemy is a specialist in laying traps. But when you seek God, the Holy Ghost has the way of taking you out steering you through through affairs of life that you will not be yoked just like Jesus you have the capacity to do it seek God, get close to the Holy Ghost let the Holy Ghost be your friend, say Amen, amen. when you are dealing with steps you've got to take deliberate steps sometimes you don't need to always, yes, the Spirit didn't tell me you got to take some deliberate steps sometimes. You got to take deliberate steps. You got to be. You, you got to take some steps on your own to avoid and to deal with sin. Romans six verse eight. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. No. Quickly, quickly. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lived, he lived unto God. No. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. No. Let not sin, don't allow sin. Therefore, to reign in your mortal body, that you shall obey it in the last thereof. Don't allow sin to dwell. Go back, go back, go back. I'll come to you this way. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in the last thereof. Don't let your body be an, a, 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 a container for sin. Don't let your body be a container where sin can dwell. Don't pump sin into your body. Don't pump sin into your body. 
There are some pictures when you watch, the more you watch, you are loading iniquity into your system. Your mind is full of iniquity, impure thoughts. Your system is loaded. That something, somebody does something against you. You are angry. You are, you are annoyed the person. You keep it inside. Your body has become a container for sin. You are allowing sin to dwell in your mortal body. You obey it. You obey it. Don't make your body a container for sin. Deal with it quickly. Somebody is doing something against you. You don't like it. Go to the person. Talk to the person. Deal with it. Let it be out. Don't load your body. You are bitter inside. You hate some things inside. You have pumped yourself with some lustful desire. Sin some things. You are loading every day. You are watching something. You are packing, building it up in your body. You, read, you obey it one day. I say you obey it. That's what the Bible says. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it. And the last thereof. Move to the next verse. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. What is your members? Your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your nose, your hands, your legs. Don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. <laughs> But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Don't yield your members. Be deliberate about it. Be deliberate. There are some places the Bible is telling you, hold your feet. Don't go there. That's what the Bible is telling. Don't yield your members. Don't yield your feet, your legs to go to those places. Don't yield it. Don't yield it. There are some things. Don't yield your hands to handle them. Don't touch them. Don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And the Bible says that for sin, move to the next verse. For sin shall not have dominion over you. When you do that, sin won't rule over you. Your members, be deliberate about it. There are some conversations, don't yield your ears to it. Are you hearing me? There are some places, don't go. There are some drinks, don't yield your, your taste back to it. Don't yield it. There are some things, don't yield your eyes to look at it. Don't yield your eyes. Don't yield your eyes. There are some things, don't yield your tongue. Don't worry about we kiss him by the seven. Don't yield your tongue. Don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Yield yourself unto God and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin is emphatic. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Be deliberate about it. Be deliberate. Be deliberate. I won't go to this place. I won't go here. I won't do this. I won't work with this person. I won't. There are some people you work with, they will contaminate your spirit. I say, never now and then until they be and say, come on. And so why you are supposed to say, come on, I'll tell you more so. Now, we'll tell you, we'll tell you, we'll tell you. No, you're doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what you are doing. You don't know what you are doing. Don't yield yourself. God is giving us the clue to deal with sin. Say amen. amen. Let me save time. Let me save time. Be deliberate about it. You got to control your tongue sometimes. Sometimes first we talk too much. Everywhere you are talking like a parrot. It's not right. Proverbs 10, verse 19. Let me emphasize this more. Move to one thing and then we'll be out. Let's read it together. 
in the multitude of ways they wanted not sin but he that refrained his lips is wise in the multitude of ways they wanted no sin it means that sin abounds when you talk plenty you talk plenty you will lie in it you exaggerate some things in it <laughs> you will insult somebody one day you will condemn somebody one day you will blast you will do so in the multitude of ways there wants no sin sin abounds it abounds it abounds learn to keep your lips learn to talk where there's a need to talk learn to talk where there's a need the, the sad thing is that also those who talk more when you bring them behind this thing Mumutiasis will catch them. <laughs> no, God doesn't want you to talk that. That's okay, sorry, sorry. Jesus didn't talk like that. Sometimes you've got to learn how to be quiet. Say amen. Okay, put down 2 Corinthians 6 14 to 17. 2 Corinthians 6 14 to 17. It talks about, it says that, come out from amongst them. That's not the unclean thing. Sometimes you've got to come out from certain groupings, certain areas, certain things. You must move out. Be deliberate about it. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.22. 2 Timothy 2.22. It says, flee, youthful lust. Somebody told me that fleeing is a stage between running and flying. It's between running and flying. Well, I will not even see you from here. Which are you are not flying. You are running. Flee youthful lust. You have to be deliberate about it. Say amen. amen. Should you fall into sin? Should you be overtaken by sin? Confess it quickly. Confess and repent. I'll tell you two things. When you confess your sins, God forgives you. When you confess your sins, that's what the Bible says. First John 1 9. When you confess your sins, God forgives you. He cleanses you from all unrighteousness. But when you repent, see, confession is good, but repentance is better. Some of us will confess, then you go back, then you confess, then you go back, and you confess, then you go back, and you confess. You are not helping yourself. God will add repentance to it. That's what Peter talked about. He says, confess and repent. When you repent, there is some grace that comes upon you. It doesn't come upon you when you just confess. Peter says, repent. So that God will send the times of refreshing into your lives. When you repent, there's a times of refreshing that God brings into your life. It doesn't come when you just confess. When you confess, you are forgiven. When you repent, there is an opening. God opens some grace upon your life. Repentance, if you don't know it, it means to turn away from that thing and not to go back to it. May the Lord bless you. And the Lord help us to overcome. In Jesus' name. Let's be outstanding. Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302 222 372 or 0302 229 109. God bless you.